My father was a, uh, a positive thinker. He believed that if you thought positive, positive things would result. With his purchases of landmark hotels in Beverly Hills... My father uh, responded to that invitation in Spanish and was the only one who basically did that. He, he was a very religious individual. The one-time mega mansion of Hilton hotel icon Conrad Hilton went on the market in 2019 for a whopping $225 million, making it the most expensive home in the area. The extravagant Bel Air estate sits on eight acres of land, while inside it spans 40,000 square feet of space. Features include 18-foot ceilings, 60 rooms, an architectural pool house with screening room and formal bar, a lighted tennis court, a separate basketball court, a guest house court, Koi ponds, and much, much more. But before we discover everything about the former Conrad Hilton estate, we'll dive into the life and success of the hospitality legend himself, the pioneering force behind the iconic Hilton Hotels. Conrad Nicholson Hilton, born on December 25th, 1887 in San Antonio, New Mexico, rose from humble beginnings that would end up shaping his pursuit of success. Growing up in a small family with Norwegian roots, young Conrad valued hard work, integrity, and the importance of genuine connections. In fact, he was shaped by some major influences which included his parents, his sisters, and the Catholic Church. Conrad's mom always told him that when life hit him with challenges, whether it was losing his favorite pony or going through a rough patch during the Great Depression, head to church and pray it out. As a young boy, Hilton first worked at his father's general store in Socorro County, New Mexico, which was converted into a 10-room hotel. After trying his luck as a banker briefly, Conrad had the intention of buying a bank in Texas during the oil boom. However, in 1919, Conrad ended up snagging his first hotel instead of a bank, the Mobley Hotel in Cisco, Texas. The spa was so popular that rooms were changing hands like hotcakes, so they even converted the dining room into more rooms to meet this demand. Conrad went on to buy and build hotels all throughout Texas, like the high-rise Dallas Hilton, which opened in 1925 and kicked off his Hilton Hotel legacy. Then he created the Abilene Hilton, the Waco Hilton, and El Paso Hilton. During the Great Depression, Hilton was nearly forced into bankruptcy and lost several of his hotels. He was strong. He kept his head up, remaining the manager of some of the hotel chain and eventually got control back of all his hotels. Conrad Hilton wasn't just a hotelier, he was an innovator. In 1947, he purchased the Stevens Hotel in Chicago, one of the largest hotels in the world at the time, which showed his vision. His belief that travel could foster peace led to the famous phrase, world peace through international trade and travel. Hilton hotels became synonymous with luxury sophistication and amazing service. In the 1950s, he ventured into other realms, acquiring hotels, airlines, and even the carte blanche credit card company. Behind closed doors, Conrad Hilton's lifestyle mirrored the glamour of the hotels he built. A jet setter before the term was even a thing, he frequented elite social circles, rubbing shoulders with celebs and other successful people. Hilton's romantic journey was as dynamic as his business ventures. He tied the knot not once, not twice, but three times. His first marriage was to marry Adelaide Barron in 1925, which resulted in the birth of their only son, Conrad Nicholson Hilton Jr. However, this union faced challenges and eventually ended in divorce in 1934. Hilton jumped back into the game, marrying again shortly after. This time, he married the stunning actress Zaza Gabor, adding a touch of Hollywood to his life. Yet, even this star-studded romance faced its share of turbulence, resulting in divorce in 1947. Next, Hilton embarked on his third marriage with actress and socialite Patricia McClintock. This union brought forth three children, Richard Hilton, Baron Hilton, and Eric Hilton. The relationship lasted until Hilton's passing in 1979. As success poured in, Hilton's lifestyle reflected the grandeur of his achievements. His main residence, the historic Holmby Hills estate in LA, was a mansion fit for a mogul. Surrounded by sprawling gardens and luxury amenities, this estate epitomized the opulence Hilton was used to.
to. In Conrad's later years, he settled into his final home, the Bel Air Mansion in Los Angeles, which was a serene retreat for the aging icon overlooking the city he left a huge mark upon. Now, let's talk about this one-of-a-kind mansion, which has a fascinating history dating back to the 1930s. It was originally constructed for the widow of a glass bottle manufacturer, Hilda Weber. In 1934, she purchased what would become Casa Encantada for $100,000, which was a jaw-dropping sum during the Great Depression. Casa Encantada, meaning the House of Enchantment as it was known, was envisioned and brought to life by architect James Delena, a master of Georgian architecture infused with influences from Art Deco and modern styles. In 1935, Hilda also hired Benjamin Purdy as landscape architect. A year later, his crew started grading the property, planting full-grown trees and preparing the gardens, which would stretch for hundreds of feet behind the mansion. Hilda further hired people to design and manufacture custom furnishings, carpets, and more, which was another exuberant cost. In 1937, construction began on the sprawling 40,000 square foot mansion and its outbuildings. By the end of 1938, Casa Encantada was complete. Sadly, like many who come into money quickly, Hilda was always careless about her funds, and her day-to-day -day living expenses were enormous, with a household staff of 21 and 21 more individuals to tend to the grounds. In 1948, she reluctantly put Casa Encantada up for sale. The original asking price was $1.5 million, less than the estate and its furniture had cost 10 years earlier, but no takers. Finally, in 1950, along came Conrad Hilton, who purchased the epic estate with its furniture, art, and silver for the low, low cost of $225,000. For Conrad Hilton, Casa Encantada lived up to its name, and he lived there in grand style until his death in 1979. In those four decades, Hilton made almost no changes to the mansion, its furnishing and art or even the grounds. The mansion was a stunning time capsule of grand, high style 1940s taste. After Hilton's passing, the family sold the estate for $12.4 million, to price for any single family home in the US at the time. In 2000, Casa Encantada was sold to its current owner for $94 million, setting another record for the most expensive home in the country. More recently, the estate was listed for a whopping $250 million, but was then lowered to $195 million after sitting on the market. As of 2023, it was still for sale at this price. The sprawling seven bedroom mega mansion that Conrad Hilton long called home is now tied to the honor of being the nation's priciest home listing, shared with the designer oceanfront Malibu home and a three story penthouse in Midtown Manhattan. Nestled above the Bel Air Country Club in LA, this palace that housed the Hilton Hotel magnate is light filled and sprawling. The main residence boasts an entry hall with 18 foot high ceilings and a sweeping staircase, which then leads to the multiple living and dining rooms. There's also a walnut paneled library, an art deco bar, and detailed period moldings. In total, the mansion has 60 rooms throughout, while the master suite on its own offers up 3,500 square feet of space, two sitting rooms, and two ensuite baths. Among the array of luxury features, Casa Encantada offers a professional screening room, a reception hall, as well as breathtaking views of the mountains and ocean from nearly everywhere. Spread across the estate are additional amenities, like a full guest house, an architectural pool house with formal bar, manager's quarters, a lighted tennis court, a separately constructed basketball court, and of course, an impressive swimming pool. The landscaping across the property's eight acres is equally upscale, as there are rose gardens, multiple greenhouses, and even koi ponds. If the current asking price is to be met, Conrad Hilton's one-time Bel Air estate is poised to set a new record as the highest price home ever sold in California, surpassing the recently sold Spelling Manor in Holmby Hills for $119.75 million. The allure of this mansion lies not just in its price tag, but in its rich history and the amazing efforts to preserve its timeless elegance. Well, that's gonna conclude this look into the life and home of the legendary Conrad Hilton. We got a chance to learn more about his record-breaking Bel Air estate and how he came to be the man behind the Hilton hotel chain. Before we go, answer me this. 
If you could stay at any Hilton hotel or property around the globe, which would it be and why? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm Care the Vampire Slayer. Follow me on Instagram to chat. And if you want to see more of what I've been up to in my free time, check out my new DIY account, Fix It With Kara. I would love to connect with you guys over there. I'll see you in another video. Bye.